Deep brain stimulation is a, a therapeutic technique of placing very tiny electrodes in very tiny parts of the brain without hurting people. And when we do that, we can stimulate certain areas and improve a whole lot of conditions. So what we do is we stimulate the area and the cells in that area, and we can take away things like tremor, stiffness, and slowness in Parkinson's. The discussions with people whom we feel are good candidates for deep brain stimulation, say in Parkinson's disease, really comes down to this. The medications are very effective in relieving symptoms, but because you need more and more over time, the complications arise. You've got to have lots of drugs, or you've got to have a lot very frequent. And then you have the capacity to actually help tremor, stiffness and slowness, and importantly as well, reduce the drugs you should undergo deep brain stimulation sooner rather than later when the medications aren't maintaining a quality of life. We're actually modulating the structure. The structure to move is not broken, but the drugs can't maintain that over time. So we're able to actually modulate it and let the messages come through and people can just keep moving. It'll last as long as your chassis does. You see people who have been struggling and you know where they're going and they're going to struggle more and to see them terrible and then suddenly move and use their hands again and walk, that's so cool. People years ago had an idea that the brain was like the pinnacle of what goes on in humans and suddenly we're in the position to study an individual brain cell. So I can be with the team and we're in the theatre and we're looking at something, we can say to somebody, tell us what you think about the colour blue. And we can see neurons involved in thinking about the colour blue. Then we can look at circuits in the brain and that's what we're looking at and applying the principles we've learned in Parkinson to take us to other conditions, quite varied conditions. People want to know what other conditions that we're using, and that is certainly expanding. The Tourette's people in, you know, usually teenagers to late teenagers, some adults with Tourette's. We've operated on some children we've kept out of hospital now for a few years, who were actually coming in and spending six months in the intensive care units. We're watching closely what happens to our obsessive compulsive disorder patients, and we're going to be clearly very interested in what happens to our anorexia nervosa patients. Care to share. Brought to you by St Andrew's War Memorial Hospital, because your health matters.